I'm going to talk through um, some approaches to periodization. Um, obviously, it's quite an individual thing um, with Helen or, or I. Um, we'll each go through it individually at some point as well. Um, but this is more some of the, the general principles that we will use when we go through it, just so you've got a bit of background on on why why we're doing various things. So, I mean, the first thing we're going to go through what periodization is. It, some of you it might be obvious, um, but it's, it's worth just touching on that to start with. Um, go through why, why we might periodise. So if you don't do periodisation, if you don't use that in your, to guide your training, what would you do instead? Um, and sort of some, some three, three types of periodisation, uh, just the general sort of outlines that we might have. Um, so that's the first almost, <coughs> it, it, it might be a little bit dry in terms of theory, um, just a few ideas. It's going to be quite short the first bit. Um, but then, as I say, the second part of the presentation, we're going to talk through which is going to be most appropriate for, for you and how the process we, we, we go through together um, to decide on, on which, on how we plan out your sort of long term um, training. So, the first thing, what, it, what, what is periodization? Um, there are two quotes I took out of a book uh, by Bomba, who's the godfather of period, periodization. He's got a, a really big, heavy book. Um, and he's, he's, he's the guy who started it all off um, from his work with sort of Eastern European athletes um, when they were dominant for many reasons. Um, but the periodization is the one thing that's lasted that I think we can all, we can all take something from. Uh, so the first thing is the division of the annual plan to ensure an optimal performance for the main competition. So, I mean, there's a couple of things to take from that quote. Um, it's, it's having a plan, basically. So you, you've, at the start of the season, at, at the time we are now, you look at what you, your next season and, and the future, and we're building a plan of what we're going to do at each stage um, as we go along. So it's not leaving it to chance. So you, you're going to divide it up and make sure you tick all the boxes. And it's to ensure an optimal performance for the main competition. So you've got your big target in mind. It might be, it might be a, a particular road race or a time trial or a sportive somewhere in the season. And you want to be at your best for that event. So it might mean that you're slightly below your best at other points in the year, but it's building towards that main, that main target. So when you can see some ideas around having a firm goal in mind as, as you're building towards it. Um, and then again, second quote, um, structure in training phases to lead to the highest level of speed, strength and endurance. So it's this idea that you're working on every aspect of your performance building up to your main competition. So it's just you're going to touch every base, you're going to work on speed, strength and endurance and it's how you, you put those in in the build up to your, your competition um, so you don't miss any of them out. Um, those of you who've had the pleasure of working with PB Science for, a, for um, a little bit longer might have seen something like this um, that Helen sent out to her athletes last year. Um, I think it's far too complicated, personally. But, uh, <laughs> as, as you can see, uh, along here you've got the calendar. Um, Perhaps it's not quite so obvious. With um, involved, you've got the main events of the year, so you've already targeted where you want to be at your best fitness-wise, and then here it's broken down into preparation and competition phases, and then and then breaking it down even further and having specific aims for each block along along those lines. So, I mean, I don't expect you to be able to see the details on there. It's just this idea of you can come up with a, a plan like this, and you know all the way through the year what you're going to be working on. Um, well, I've maybe mentioned at that point, obviously, plans are subject to change. Things are bound to happen as we go along. Um, I'd say if, if anyone wants a copy of something like that, we, we can put that up, if you haven't seen something like that. But so it's, it's, it's just to get the idea of how you, you're breaking things down into stages so that you, you know where, you're, where you are at every point of the year. Um, so why, why periodise? Um, what, what is the point in making all that effort to come up with this plan? Um, what, what are you going to get from it? Um, I guess the alternative is to do mixed training. So you just do a bit of everything all year. You might do a lo one long ride a week, um, a hill session. You might go out and do some time trial type work um, and just work on every aspect all the way through the year, um, doing a little bit every week. Um, and that's, one, uh, that's the alternative, really. Um, the problem with doing that is you might get impaired adaptation. There's a lot of research that's uh, on, on, a, on a simple level, for instance if you do strength training and endurance training at the same time, you're not going to get the, 
the most benefits from your endurance training and you're not going to get the most benefits from your strength training. You can maybe go a little bit more, a bit deeper into that and if you do, if, you, if you're building endurance and doing low intensity training and trying to do high intensity training in the week as well, you're not going to get the recovery from each one so you, you're actually going to impair the adaptation to each type of training. So with, with periodization you can focus on a particular aspect and, and do them in sequentially so that you get the most the most bang for your buck, <coughs> cliche phrase there, uh, along the way. Uh, the risk of overtraining. Um, if you're training uh, all different types at the same time, it's quite possible that you're not going to get the recovery in again. So if you've got uh, a lot of volume and a lot of intensity, um, it's very diff It's going to be very difficult to um, prevent yourself overdoing it. Um, and it's difficult to plan for peaking. Um, like I say, building endurance, it tends to take quite a long time. You might need 12 to 16 weeks to really see some big improvements in that. Higher intensity training, um, training, sprint training, things like that, it's going to happen much quicker. So if, if you've got everything in there at the same time, you might find that <coughs> each aspect of each component of your fitness is going to develop at a different rate. So you might come to your, your peak event and your and you might find your endurance is absolutely fantastic, but you haven't got the ability to, to cope with the intense efforts you might need. So I'm, I'm speaking a bit generally here, so it's perhaps a bit muddled, but does, does that make sense to everyone? Yeah? And staleness. If you're doing a bit of everything all year round, uh, there's no way of changing it up. You might be able to do a little bit more of one, one thing or the other, but there's, there's nowhere to go. You can't make a change, whereas if you periodise your, your, your year well, you, you might spend a period of time focusing on your, on your endurance training, on building that base of fitness. And then you know you've maybe got 12 weeks working on that, and then you move on to something else. So you're, you're changing up the training as well. So you avoid that, that just long, long drag, um, which I think is why a lot of athletes who don't, Follow a carefully periodised plan. They may be, they may be, yeah. Come, come the summer, they've, they've, they've had enough. They don't really want to ride their bikes. And I think having this periodisation in place it really helps with the motivation. Knowing, knowing that you've got a set period of time to work on something, and then you move on to something else, and it's all targeted towards your goal. So after giving mixed training a good slagging, um, it's perhaps useful for maintenance though. Um, you might build build your fitness for a carefully periodised plan and when you hit the race season, you don't necessarily want to <coughs> carry on building your fitness, you're already close to your, your peak, close to your best. <coughs> but by doing mixed training, you, you can touch on all the different aspects that are important to you through the week and you might be able to, to hold that fitness through, through a four to six week period while, while you are racing. So if you've got a number of races lined up, by doing mixed training, if you, if you do one longer endurance ride, if you do a, a high intensity session and some sprint training, although it might not be building your fitness the most effective way, because you're, you're touching on each aspect regularly, you can hopefully hold that peak for a bit longer. So you might carefully periodise yourself up to that peak and then do some mixed training for a while while you're, while you're in that race period before, before stripping back and starting again. So, so it's, it's not... There are times where it might be useful when it's that maintenance, that keeping that fitness at a high level. Um, so as we said, as, as those, qu those quotes at the start said about what periodisation is, they're also the reason why we do it. So it's, this is, I think, the, the key thing. It's about reaching your optimal form for your goal event. So if you've got that goal, that really big target that you want, by having the periodisation in place, you're going to be at your best for that event. And it's, it's that planning. It's just planning to be at the best for that event. Um, and it leaves time for the development of all the components of fitness. So, for instance, if you're a road racer, for instance, that's just, just, just as an example, you know you need to have a really big, big level, high level of endurance just to be able to finish the race. They're, they're generally quite long, so you're looking at three, four, five hours or maybe more. So you need that endurance. They also, they can be very fast and you can have big changes of pace, so you need to be able to cope with high intensity efforts to be able to stay with the group, break away from the group. And then come, come the end of the race, you might need to out sprint your rivals to actually to, to get your result. So you need to work on just three, there are three basic things you need, to, you need to work on. And so by carefully planning that out, you make sure you cover every aspect before there. So when you reach race day, 
you, you, you've developed all those and you know you're in the best possible shape. Whereas if you, if you like I say, if you've got that mixed training, it's very difficult to be sure you've done enough work on, on each aspect. Um. <coughs> By cycling the training names, I say it means you can you can have a specific stimulus on each en energy system. Once once you get to a, a reasonable train level, which, which, which you're all at in this room, you are you're all trained cyclists, whether whether you'd argue otherwise or not, you've all reached a, a level of performance already. And to move that on to the next level and get better, you really need to you need to target each aspect. And if you've got 12 hours a week to train, in order to get the adaptation you need on, on a specific energy system, you might need to give devote that whole 12 hours to train that area just just to lift it up. Um, and so you need to cycle it. So th this is why you can't combine things. By doing 12 hours a week focused on building your endurance, it's going to make sure that you really get the stimulus you need to improve it, which you might not be able to do. If you do, it, if you do a little bit of it, bit of it <coughs> each week, it might not be enough to boost you onto the next level. Um, and again, touching again, I think it's very important, especially with some of the weather we've been having lately, <coughs> and it's been on winter before, for most people racing in the summer. So by dividing the year up into smaller blocks, you've got these intermediate goals along the way. So you know when you're training, you don't think, oh, it's such a long time until the next race. I'm, I'm, what's the point in going out now? You know, for instance, say your, your, your goal event is in May, you might have 12 weeks, 12 weeks being, building up to that to work on specific fitness for that event. You might need to do I don't know, four weeks working on a weakness after that, and all of a sudden you know you all you've got is 12 weeks to do that base training, which is a, the boat a lot of you are in at the moment. So if you know you've got 12 weeks to work on your endurance, you've got another another deadline in there, and it, all of a sudden that 12 weeks takes on a whole new level of importance, because if you don't do it now, you can't fit it in later, because you've got to work on the other things that are going to take you to that, that event. So it's having these intermediate timeline, intermediate goals in there, they're going to help you yeah, help you with the training. So, has it, have I lost anyone yet? No? That's alright then. <laughs> Sorry, Dan, I wonder if I can ask you a question. Yeah, please Talk do. Talk about these different energy systems. How separate are they in reality? They're not. Entity and endurance? Um, they're not, no. I say it's one of the things, the energy systems, they're, they're, they are on a continuum. So, <coughs> by saying that, for instance, doing, doing zone, zone 2 training, <coughs> targeting one specific en energy system, and maybe 30 second intervals at another end. There's no, there's, no, there's no line in the middle saying that they're completely different. So, yeah, so it is, it is a continuum. Um, but again, it's, it's being targeted on one end of the continuum rather than the other. So to say, to say that you won't get any benefit on your, your top end fitness from doing zone two rides is, is maybe a bit wrong, I think. I think that's something that gets lost a lot. If I can just chip in there, it's a good question, Chris. I think the energy systems are very much on a continuum. Um, I think the difference, or the way we need to think about it is, there are different structures in the body that are responsible to work along that continuum. So, zone two training with a bit of zone three is great for growing the kind of machinery in your legs to um, oxidise lactic acid, to, to use oxygen more, um, like the mitochondria in the, the, in, in the muscles that, that process the oxygen. Mm -hmm. So those things are very specific to an intensity you're working at, but those structures involve gene switching on, protein being laid down. If you then confuse the body by doing intervals at the same time, you're diverting what effort could be to growing the machinery you really need. So yeah, you know, the, the energy systems aren't discrete little boxes, but the components within the body that help within those energy systems might be a little bit more intensity specific. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's taking the sort of very reductionist viewpoint on that. This, as far away from racing as you are at the moment, you could argue that you're, you're training just to build those structures and it's not about being fit. So if you're not fit at this time of year, but you're doing the right training to, to build, build uh, grow the capillaries, build the mitochondria, although it might not show in your performance, when you do come to do the training later on, that's, like, like I said, that's, that's what, that's what's going to help you make the big gains when you come to do the, the specific training. So, yeah, good question.